Neither of my parents were very religious. My mother is a spiritual atheist, though I still don't know what that means, but I'd argue that my father is a religious atheist, which is just as toxic as it sounds. So, while I say that I was born with that religious affiliation, there is an asterisk there. My aforementioned religious atheistic father. I would go as far as to say that his atheism was militant. He kind of made me and my siblings believe, whether he meant to or not, that religious people are morons. Fortunately, I kind of got my head out of my ass when I was near the end of high school. With that being said, in the same way that religious people talk about feeling as though they're being punished by God with misfortune even after leaving their faith, I still have what I would describe as a mild superiority complex, despite knowing that I'm just like everybody else. I don't really have a proper name for this experience, so I've come to call it knowledge without belief, though it could also be described as belief despite contradictory knowledge. It's something that most of the people I know fall victim to, and I have found it most often in my personal life when discussing self-esteem. For example, a person can know intellectually that they are worth being, or that they aren't fat, but they may not feel that way, they may not believe it. So what I mean is that despite knowing that I am no better or smarter than anybody else for being an atheist, I still have this feeling of superiority over or pity for a person when I learn that they are religious. It's not a feeling I like, it just happens. And I'm convinced that my father's religious atheism is responsible for this feeling. Now with all that out of the way, let's talk about what the video actually says it's about. The concepts for feelings that are foreign to me as someone born and raised without religious affiliation. Just to clarify, I understand basic concepts like the idea that there's a creator or the belief that you will be judged at the end of your life. These do make sense to me. However, the thing I'm referring to is how somebody feels with respect to these ideas. It's hard to explain, so I'll just jump into number one. There's no significance to the order, it's just the order that they popped into my head while I was writing them down. So the first concept that just confuses me is the idea that the universe was made just for you. And by you, I mean us as humans. This one really kind of fucks with my head. I feel like with all the similarities we share with animals, there's only one thing that separates us from them, and it's our intelligence. So many animals are superior with other things. Stamina, speed, smell, sight, etc. The only reason humans think a god or gods made the world for them is because we were the first ones to develop a brain complex to bring forth the concept of a god. It's so bizarre and egocentric, I think, to believe that the universe was made just for you. I've never believed this, and I've often wondered about alien life and how much we could learn from them. If the universe was made for us, it's a really fucking hostile place, and it had to have been made to torture us, if anything. So the second thing that I don't quite get is worship. I'm going to be honest, I don't think I really understand worship. I have no clue what separates worship from non-worship. I've met people who get turned on by body part worship, but I don't actually know what they mean by that. I don't think I could do it. Idly enough, I think I'd actually be into it if I actually knew what the fuck it was. So number three, I guess, can kind of be lumped together with number two, but I feel like it's separate enough. I don't understand what the fuck prayer is. When I was little, I thought it was just asking for shit. But when I learned Muslims were supposed to do it five times a day, I can't think of a way to come up with shit to ask for five times every day forever. So I think number four is going to sound weird to a few people, but I'm going to say, like, non-participatory gods. So, gods sort of make sense to me, but only in the way that they make sense to fantasy characters in the stories I've seen. In stories, gods tend to play an active role in the characters' lives, to the point of being a character themselves even in the Torah and various iterations like the Holy Bible and the Quran, their respective versions of God play an active role in those stories. Contrast these with today, where all of divine intervention is only as strong as it's a coincidence that benefited me or someone else, or 
it felt like God was trying to tell me something through this event. I understand that that's enough for a lot of people, and I'll respect that, but it isn't enough for me. And while I understand that it's enough for a lot of people, I struggle to understand how it's enough. Now, number five is the only thing I ever really get emotional about, and that's the concept of heaven and hell. Mostly hell. So, the concept of an eternal afterlife, separate from the reality we know, is confusing to me. What's the purpose of this life if there's literally an infinite one after it? Moreover, why is there a split? Why is there a need to separate the good from the bad? I've never talked about it before, but I believe that punishment is wrong. Rehabilitation is the only way to respond to people being awful. I'll probably make a video explaining why I think that is, but to me, the idea that in response to a temporary transgression against an infinite being, that a person should be tortured as much as possible for the rest of forever is absolutely repulsive and turns me away from all of the Abrahamic religion. I don't care if Yahweh, Allah, or Jehovah made the universe. I don't want to be party to the infinite suffering of anybody. I couldn't live with myself if I supported somebody like that, whether or not they're God. Don't get me wrong, I find the idea of an afterlife appealing. But if that's the kind of person running it, I'm not supporting it. So this sixth one isn't really the same as the rest, and it's more me describing the only kind of God that makes sense to me. Now, I haven't read any of H.P. Lovecraft's work. But my understanding of his cosmology is that the Lovecraftian gods are essentially the creators of the universe, but they didn't create it for any other reason than they were just bored. And the beings in said universe literally only exist for the entertainment of their creator. There's no divine plan, and the gods aren't benevolent. They're essentially people who just have a sort of ultimate power over the universe. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me, but even if I am wrong, the cosmology that I just described in terms of gods sounds like either the most likely one or the one that makes the most sense at the very least. It makes far more sense that a dude would just be bored and decide to make a universe and watch it do its thing. For those of you who've watched it, in Rick and Morty, Rick literally just creates a universe to power his car. Like... You don't have to be some all-powerful being in order to make a universe, supposedly. Hell, we could actually just be NPCs that a cosmic, from our perspective, being is playing. It's essentially what we do with the video games that we play. I think that's far more likely that we're just NPCs for a game in a universe on a higher level than the concept of some cosmic, all-knowing being making the entire universe just so he can watch a few billion fuckheads on a tiny rock in one corner of it dick around for a few thousand years. So, there it is. Some schmuck on the internet tells you what he doesn't get about the Abrahamic religions that he was constantly exposed to as he grew up. Hell, it's what he's still exposed to through news and the internet, etc. Now, before I do go, I want to do a short, unsponsored free software spotlight. You see, I like to promote free software when I can, because I realize that a lot of people don't know that there's software out there that exists for free, which there is no catch for, and most of these developers are funded exclusively through donations. For this spotlight, I'll be talking about LibreOffice, the office suite that I use to write the scripts for all of my videos. You see, in my experience, the only office suites that most people know about, which include document writers, spreadsheets, presentation programs, are either Microsoft Office or Google Drive. But in fact, there is a widely used and well-maintained free and open source office suite called LibreOffice. In terms of utility and the things that you could do with it, I'm pretty sure it can do more than Google Drive can, and it has almost everything that you would expect from Microsoft Office. Like all other free and open source software plugs that I do on this channel, you can even look at the code and change it to be how you want. But it works pretty well out of the box, and it has no problem opening doc and docx files. But I do advise those of you who start using LibreOffice start using the ODT file format, because it's open, whereas doc and docx are proprietary owned by Microsoft. So that's the end of the plug. And that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to do all the typical shit, LCS, all that good shit. I love y'all, and I'll see you when the next one's ready. Bye.